Hello everyone and welcome to another episode. Just as we were thinking that COVID is perhaps nearly coming to an end, the condition in India seemingly came out of nowhere. And what we see right now is a mass destruction of human lives, which is shocking and frightening beyond words. Today we will try to see are there lessons to learn from this by every part of the world. And also maybe is this the time that we should stop following political leaders and the examples that they are setting and act at an individual level in a scientific way so that we can save ourselves and also help whoever is around us in whatever way we can and especially with the right scientific advice. Let's look at the current situation in India and let's look at what led up to it. In September 2020, the COVID numbers in India drastically came down and it continued to reduce over the next few months. In October 2020, a group of scientists from the top universities in India submitted a mathematical model called Sutra in which they showed that COVID is likely to end in India in February 2021. They based it on the number of COVID positive uh, cases at the moment and the number of people who were showing symptoms, indicating that most of them are able to fight it without showing a major illness. In December 2020, India nearly forgot about COVID. In January, a group of scientists said that new variants of COVID are coming up in India. However, at this point, political leaders took no caution of it. They continued to encourage huge crowds, religious gatherings, social gatherings, events, where practically no masks, no social distancing or any COVID protocol was followed. On January 14th, according to a report by Guardian, Around 1 million people gathered for the festival of Kumbh Mela in the state of Uttar Pradesh in India. On 1st February 2021, the Mumbai suburban train system was opened up. The Mumbai suburban train system is also called as the lifeline of Mumbai and is one of the most crowded transport systems. Though masks were made compulsory here, social distancing is nearly impossible in these crowds. From the beginning of February, COVID numbers started rising. This was not heeded by the political leaders at that time. In the beginning of March, election campaigning started happening in four different states in India. On the 7th of March, the BJP party targeted to bring 1 million people for the Prime Minister's rally in West Bengal. They did this by doing a door-to-door -door campaigning, requesting everyone to come and attend in person over there. The BJP unit in West Bengal planned to hold 1500 rallies in just West Bengal alone. And with that, other political parties followed and competed to gather as many people as possible who sometimes wore no masks and where social distancing was almost non-existent. The rise in Bengal's cases from the month of March can be seen from this graph. The rise of COVID cases in all the states where election is being held can be seen from this graph. The states where elections are being held are West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Assam. The graphs show the rise of COVID cases from the beginning of March in each of the states. Some of the other worst hit states is Uttar Pradesh where Kumbh Mela was held and its neighboring state of Delhi. The other worst hit state is Maharashtra, whose capital is Mumbai. This just shows that no matter what kind of behavior political leaders display or encourage normal people to do, it is up to us to save ourselves. We have to know that we have to maintain our own social distancing, our own masking and avoiding crowds till the time we are vaccinated and scientifically it is declared that COVID has been eradicated from the world. We can't expect COVID to miraculously vanish just because a political leader says so or behaves irresponsibly in that way. What is the current condition in India? There are numerous shocking reports all over the news. Crematoriums overflowing, bodies being burnt on the roads, bodies lying in queues and decaying, people with lack of oxygen dying in front of the camera. 
journalists crying while talking to victims and hearing their stories. However, though the figures look terrifying, they are still not a complete picture of the reality on the ground. Though we can say that we should not try to spread negativity and panic, however, data and reality should not be suppressed because it is facts which would help people take informed decision in a crucial time like this, both at an individual level and also as an institution in planning within the system. Therefore, I'll point out certain evidence that will give a clear picture on how many times more is the enormity of the problem compared to what is shown by the official numbers. According to Reuters, in Lucknow, the capital city of BJP-led Uttar Pradesh, in just one COVID-only crematorium, the number of bodies were double as what the government showed for the entire city. And this was observed continuously for six days. On April 12th, in Ahmedabad, the capital of Gujarat, 12 COVID-19 deaths were reported. Yet, Sandesh, a leading Gujarati newspaper, counted 68 bodies coming out of just one hospital. They did this by camping outside that hospital for 17 hours and counting every body that came out of the morgue. The current death toll in India is at 208,000 people with 3,000 more deaths happening every day. The total number of COVID cases as it stands today is 360,000 people. However, according to epidemiologist Pramal Mukherjee, the death figures might be about five times more than the official figures shown, and the number of cases might be 15 times more than the official figures shown by the government. The other grave problem in India is the Indian government's choking of social media posts that are critical of the Indian government. On 28th April, a hashtag calling for the resignation of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was blocked by Facebook, hiding about 12,000 posts that were critical of the Indian government's handling of the COVID pandemic. Twitter removed around 50 tweets that was criticizing the Prime Minister Narendra Modi and his government on the handling of COVID. The government gave the reason that they were spreading false news. Yet examples of those tweets are like this. India recording over 200,000 cases every day, shortage of vaccines, shortage of medicines, increasing number of deaths, healthcare system is collapsing. Modi made disaster. Nero was busy doing election rallies. India will never forgive Prime Minister Narendra Modi for underplaying the corona situation in the country and letting so many people die due to mismanagement. Actor Vineet Kumar Singh tweeted in Hindi that he was in Varanasi in Uttar Pradesh and he found it extremely difficult to get any medication. He criticized the political rallies that were carrying on amidst this pandemic. What is the rationale behind taking down these tweets? Where is the fake news in all this? Not only this, in the state of Uttar Pradesh, the Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath threatened legal action against private hospitals if they reported a shortage of oxygen. The Chief Minister said there is no shortage of oxygen. He directed his officials to take action under National Securities Act and seize properties of those who were spreading this propaganda in social media. Yet, hospital executives, doctors, Victims have come on camera and said, do what you have to do. We are in shortage of oxygen. India should be a wake up call for the rest of the world. COVID strains can get created anywhere very suddenly. If caution is thrown away too quickly, then an unexpected situation can suddenly get developed anywhere. And once numbers start growing to this level, no healthcare system in the world can support it. Let us take a look at a few other countries which are at the moment at a worse situation compared to India in terms of COVID. Looking at this graph, Brazil and Mexico are two countries whose number of deaths and cases are even worse than the figures in India. Let's take a quick look at what led up to it for each of these countries. Brazil's current death toll has crossed 400,000. This is twice as that of India. 
Experts say that by July, this number is going to go up to at least 600,000. Here are some of the actions and messages by Brazil's president, Bolsonaro, in regard to COVID. He refused to impose lockdowns and called state governments and mayors who imposed lockdowns tyrants. He joked that Pfizer vaccines will turn people into crocodiles and he said he will not get vaccinated. He asked people to stop whining about the situation and said COVID is just a little flu. However, he did carry out a great vaccination drive, but people got very mixed messages. In Mexico, the official death toll is somewhere around 215,000, a little more than that of India. According to a report by Guardian, Mexican officials discreetly acknowledged that the actual numbers can be somewhere around 300,000. The Mexican president, Obrador, continued to tour his country and embrace his supporters. He continued to re resist lockdowns, masks, and social distancing. In January 2021, when Mexico was plunged in the worst devastating second wave, the Mexican prime minister was photographed holidaying in the beach. It sent very mixed messages. Some of the Mexicans who lost their closest people said that they were victims of lack of information. Why should the rest of the world be bothered about it? This is because if there are a growing number of cases anywhere in the world, then it is a hotbed for creating new strains. And new strains are something which can endanger the entire world again. Even those places who have completely vaccinated themselves, they can face a fresh state of COVID danger with new strains. However, I'll also point out two of the most extraordinarily positive actions by India at this time. One is the vaccination drive. If you look at this graph, India is the second highest in the world in terms of the number of people it has vaccinated, second only to the US by just a few numbers. India has vaccinated nearly four times more people than the UK, and the total number is around 121 million people, as we can see from this graph. The second thing is India has exported one of the greatest number of vaccines to the rest of the world and also donated a large number of vaccine to poorer countries through the COVAX scheme. Though the government came under a huge amount of criticism for exporting vaccines and when the situation of COVID looks like this, the current situation of COVID has not been created due to lack of vaccines. It has been created due to lack of COVID restrictions. Let's take a quick look at some of the countries where COVID devastation has not happened and what have they done right? The top examples of countries where there have been very few deaths and very few cases, and that also without lockdowns, are Taiwan, South Korea, Sweden. In all these countries, though they have not imposed lockdowns, they have maintained very strict rules of masking, social distancing, and continuously giving the right messaging. In all these cases, they have also imposed very efficient systems of contact tracing and quarantines. In my last episode, one of my viewers had asked in the comment section below, how long would these vaccines be effective for? Will these vaccines be effective for a lifetime? Or do we have to take these vaccines every year? Or would the threat of COVID be there forever? According to Amish Adalija, a senior scholar in the John Hopkins Center for Health, this would depend on two factors. Number one is duration of the immunity with the vaccine. And number two is creation of new strains. What we know is that the duration of these vaccines would last for at least six months. However, as experts say, this does not mean that the vaccines would not be effective after six months. It is just that because it's a new vaccine, we do not have enough data to show evidence of that at the moment. As for the new strains, the study shows this. Flu vaccines need to be taken every year because of the speed at which flu virus evolves into new strains. COVID is not a flu virus, it's a coronavirus. Detailed data analysis shows that coronavirus evolves at a speed which is four times less than flu virus. 
This makes it likely that the vaccines that we are taking for COVID is going to last us way more than a year. However, the UK government has already purchased vaccines for COVID for the next year and for many years to come. The name of this vaccine is Balneva and 40 million doses of it has already been bought by the UK. There are still various rays of hopes for us to think that COVID can end in the near future. In January 2021, UK had recorded 100,000 deaths due to COVID and became the country with the highest per capita death rate in the entire world. After that, UK ran an extremely outstanding vaccination drive. It also imposed the right restrictions, lockdowns, masks, and quarantines. On 26th April 2021, UK officially declared that it is now out of the pandemic. COVID is now endemic in the UK, which means that it will be around, but it will not harm the people. On 18th April, Israel for the first time dropped the need for wearing masks in outdoor areas. On 24th April, Israel recorded no more COVID deaths for the first time in 10 months. Most experts in Israel believe that Israel has already atten attained herd immunity. This shows right in front of our eyes that within isolated areas, if we put the right restrictions while vaccinating the whole population, we can win over COVID. However, as the Times of Israel said yesterday, there is no real herd immunity anywhere unless it's a global herd immunity. The future of COVID in the world rests in the hands of simple probability. The longer the virus is in circulation anywhere in the world, the greater are the chances that new strains will arrive. And a new strain means that the whole world can again be plunged into new dangers anytime. Do let me know what you thought of the episode with your comments. Any comment and feedback mean a lot to me. And the most important thing is to get your participation in the form of suggestions on ways in which I can improve or on any topic that you want me to talk about. Also, if you liked the episode, please do press the like button, please subscribe and please do share it with friends.